Wonderful. My question is for Colin. Um, was it easier for you to pick up the fangs or to salsa dance and pick up the mojitos? Uh, well, I can certainly remember picking up the fangs more than I can remember picking up the mojitos. <laughs> <laughs> My advice was a bit of a six-month blackout for me. Um, <laughs> But I'll make up an answer. It was, it was, you know, it was a lot of fun picking up the fangs. I mean, uh, the idea of playing a vampire for me was, it was kind of a huge box to tick. I was just a, a great fan of vampire films since I can remember from the Lost Boys, Near Dark, and, and then Nosferatu in later years. And so, um, so it was a lot of fun. Yeah, fun. Cheers. Thanks for the question, love. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Hi. Um, my question is for Anton Yelchin. I'm a huge fan of yours. I love you. You're a great actor. Oh, and thanks. Welcome. <laughs> and my question is, you're most well known for playing um, characters in sequels like Chekhov in Star Trek and Kyle Reese in Terminator Salvation and, yeah, both great films. Um, and now you're doing a remake, so I wanted to know what's it like to play a character that's already been played by someone else and how do you add your own twist to it? Well, I, I think I've been very lucky because all the characters I've been able to play have such rich histories, you know, and, and there's so much that the previous actor had already done and, 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 and it, it's an honor to take that on and see what I can bring to it. and. Um, it's a blast to do all the research, you know, and and inevitably when you look at something that's already been done, you're going to have your sort of vision of it, and uh, it, it's it's fun to pick that apart. I mean, with with Fright Night, it was a little different because the arc of the character, aside from the sort of fundamental premise, was a little different. So I, there's more room to uh, bring new things to it. But I think what was done so beautifully in the original is that when Charlie realizes, when, when his mania sort of peaks, it peaks in this awesome way, you know, and uh, he, his insanity is, 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 is just, madness is so palpable, and I really, I, I, I really wanted to bring that to this, you know, but, but um, I don't know, I've, I've, like I said, I've been lucky that every, there's so many great performances, and I just feel honored to be able to take them on and either do justice to them or, or do something a bit different. Oh, it's sort of, sort of like with a movie, it's a reimagining rather than yeah. redoing. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. and, and you, you just want to respect the original and, and in no way compete or something. You just want to bring your own, your, your interpretation and affection for it to the screen. Yeah, we have a, a, a another Amy standing there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this question's for the director. I think Imogen, you found your stunt double. <laughs> That's it. This question's for the director. Uh, in the original Fright Night, the last scene where Amy transforms into the vampire, it's really memorable because of the makeup. So what did you guys do with the remake this time? I love, I, I love your outfit, by the way. It's great. So <laughs> um, Part of what was great about the original, in terms of vampire films, is the you know is the makeup from the original, and is the fangs you know and, and the faces were so iconic, and we definitely didn't want to shy you know without like giving anything away, we didn't want to shy away from that. So you know the, you don't just have a vampire with a couple of fangs going on in this thing. That certainly uh, it gets it, it definitely pays homage to the original in that sense. Yes, sir. Is it me or does it seem like a crazy ass dream where Bullseye, Red Mist, and Kyle Reese are all sitting at the same table? <laughs> Be careful or I'll kill you with my Reese's kisses. <laughs> or peanuts. No, what I was wondering is if uh, Christopher could tell us if there's anything new with Kick Ass 2 Balls to the Wall. Um. I'm just gonna disappoint everybody who just cheered. <laughs> Honestly, uh, we have no idea. We would love to. We really would. Um, but everyone's super busy right now. But uh, Fright Night comes out August 19th. <laughs> yes, sir. Hey there. I have a question for Colin. I was just wondering, Damon, how easy it was for you to wrap your head around the level of douchebaggery involved with your role in Horrible Bosses. Oh, how difficult it was for you to get out of that role, um, if you have. What was the last part, brother? 
how easy it was to get out of that mentality if you have ever. <laughs> oh. All I can say is I'm glad I asked you to repeat the last part. <laughs> it, uh, it wasn't as far from me as those who were close to me would think that it was. Um, what you had there was an actor who was, who was kind of nervous about his first foray into the world of comedy, so it was a case of give me a bald cap and a belly. And uh, it was kind of prop central, but um, I, uh, I enjoyed it immensely. Was that a prosthetic in Horrible Bosses? Huh? That was a prosthetic in Horrible Bosses? No, it was the first time I actually just took my wig off. <laughs> very bold of me. Next question. Uh, yeah, first of all, uh, Colin, you should have won the Oscar for In Bruges. Uh, And then uh, my question is for the director. Um, what are the pressures when you approach a remake uh, as far as doing your own thing versus staying true to the original? Um, with this case, honestly, the script was so well flushed out that Marty had wrote that it was so clear to visualize. I mean, just the tone was there. And I deliberately actually stayed away from looking at the original while we prepped it to really have a sort of clear vision of what we were going to do. And then a couple of weeks before, I watched the original and then sort of revisited it and tried to pay homage to it in certain aspects. And one of those things, obviously, was the apple, which Chris had brought to the original. And uh, it was great to sort of thread that in as well as, well as a few other little moments. Yes, sir. Hi, my question is for Colin. Um, earlier you mentioned Hollywood's originality, and when I was growing up, it seemed like you were in every other blockbuster, whether it be as a guy in the telephone booth or the fighting daredevil as bullseye. And then in recent years, you've really just been able to step into these great character roles, whether it be in Bruges or as a cocaine snorting boss, now a vampire. <laughs> uh, how much have you enjoyed that compared to earlier in your career? Um, I have enjoyed the work a lot more in the last five or six years. I just enjoyed the work a lot more. I, I came to success really quickly in relation to most other actors. It happened really fast and the trajectory through what would be called a successful career. Success I know is relative and you can say the films were shit so it wasn't actually a success. But you know what I mean? The, the idea of how fast the chaos around me took grip, it was, it was insane. And I, I myself personally lost sight of why I went to my first acting class when I was 17 in Dublin. Or not even my first acting class, but why I went back for the second one. And I kind of lost sight of that through this good fortune that I was experiencing vis-a-vis -vis Hollywood. Um, and so the last six years, I feel like I just reconnected with the Colin who was 17 and went into a drama class in Dublin and didn't understand what was going on and, and kind of wanted to continue because that lack of understanding was, was something that didn't only continue to breed curiosity, but. Um, yeah, it was, just, it, it was just something that still... I reconnected with the mystery of the whole thing and just the imagination of the whole thing and how much fun it is to be an actor. Whether it's a dramatic role you're doing or not, it's a lot of fun. I mean, to do what we do, it's such a, it's such a fortunate place to find yourself. So I just, yeah, I've enjoyed the last five years. Thanks. Yes, thanks. Yes, sir. Yes, thanks for taking my question. Uh, I'm sure my wife will want me to pose this question to Colin. <laughs> she makes me keep my shirt on when I'm, she watches this movie, so. <laughs> but I'll pose this to the uh, director and the writer. Uh, as a big fan of the original, uh, in the reimagining, did you expand at all on the, uh, the background of Jerry Dandridge? You know, is there a little bit more brought to light as far as like where his origins, where he came from, et cetera? There's a, there's a little hint. We made up a little, a little bit of uh, the story behind Jerry. Um, and I'm sure in the sequel, after you all go see the first one, we'll get more of that, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's, there, we, we touch on it, so you can figure out a little bit of his history or where he comes from. But I, I also like that, you know, that he's a predator and you don't want to give away too much information. Yes, sir. Next question. Uh, hello. Yeah, um, our question is for Colin. Um, we're both students from USC, we're filmmaking students, and we've um, kind of admired how selective you've become over the past five years in your roles, um, especially with roles like in Bruges. So, um, and we so why are you doing this crap? <laughs> <laughs> so it's very apparent that you've, made, that you've made a conscious effort to not stick to one genre. Um, despite that, we've been wondering, has there always been 
character type that you've uh, always been waiting to encounter but have yet to come across? Um, no, is the simplest answer. I just, I, I just, I read a lot of other material that's out there, and um, something either speaks to you or doesn't. You know, I usually as an actor, when you read a script, really, if you connect to something, I find if I connect to something, my lips start moving when I come to the dialogue that uh, that I'm being considered to to speak in the film. So you, the connection is beyond kind of your control. Whether it's like this was entertaining. I read this; it was a really fast read, and it was so much fun from the opening page to the last page, and then I met Craig and he had such a, a clear idea of what he wants to do with it, and I've been a fan of his work since Lars and the Real Group. There's no one character in particular, it just just a varied, you know, ideally a, a kaleidoscopic um, uh, array of attempting to portray other, other folks walking in other people's shoes, you know, whether they be more surreal or embedded in reality. Thanks. Yes, ma'am. This is for Chris, and I'm a big fan of role models and Superman. Yes, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and I was wondering if you've had any crazy real life experiences, like anything in the movies. Um, I don't play Lair like in role models, so I haven't experienced that. Um, I don't know. I mean, lately it's just I get a lot of uh, weird people calling me McLovin in strange ways. <laughs> like, thank you, thank you. Um, <laughs> Just like, yeah, I like you, you're all very sweet. Um, just like the other day, this, this, I walked into a 7-Eleven and these guys were like, that's him, that's the club, and I bet you it's five bucks, I bet you. And I was just like, dudes, relax, I can hear you, I swear, it's me, what's up? And they just like, you owe me five bucks. And they just like, <laughs> <laughs> They're really sweet, but they're just loud and obnoxious. <laughs> that's my McLovin story. <laughs> yes, sir. Hey, this is for Craig, the, the director. Um, I noticed in the car chase scene, there was like a one really long shot, very, it was sort of like reminded me of like a universal ride, almost, because, you know, with the 3D and everything. Now, do you make other choices like that in the movie? Are there more long, sweeping things really play into like the experience of 3D? Uh, yeah, that was a, there was a lot of research going into that shot. It took a couple of months to figure it out because a 3D, we shot in 3D and a 3D camera is 90 pounds. It's just huge. So trying to, you know, actually have it snake through a car, at first people just looked at me like, we're not going to spend that kind of money <laughs> to do that. And uh, we ended up figuring out a way, and you know, we chopped the whole car up, and it all slides apart. And, oops. All the uh, all the actors are on chairs, and they're all moving around, and there's this massive choreography going on. But it, it was fun to do. And we, you know, there's there's other. That's the biggest long move like that. But, but just shooting in 3D, it. it I feel like it, it's nice to let the camera slow down and move around and feel the environment and not get too cutty because the 3D, uh, you know, it just, it's just strained that way. So it was kind of fun to go back to more classic filmmaking. Hitchcock here. Yeah. Hitchcock here. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, my name is Ryan, and this is for a question for Chris Foreman's boss. Uh, I'm here for you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> If you decide to play a villain again in any movie, which hero or superhero would you want to face? <clears throat> um, I don't know. You want to remake Daredevil again, Colin, and I'll be Daredevil, and you can be Bullseye again. We'll just go at it. <laughs> um, I honestly, I want to do Kick-Ass too. That would be the next superhero movie I truly want to do. Um, we're gonna try our hardest, really. I'd be called the motherfucker in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hi. Hi. Um, Colin, I have to say, In Bruges is just an amazing performance. It's one of my favorite films. Thank you, man. Thanks, man. Hopefully, Fright Night will get up there with it. But my question is for Antoine. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm talking weird. Um, what's it like working with David Tennant, honestly? Oh, it's great. <laughs> I mean, as you can see from you know the clip, David's the nicest, funniest man. He's so the character. Just being in the room with that character is such a pleasure. Just seeing him create all those moments, and it's so exciting. Every take would be different. I mean, I love the Shirley Temple line. That, that's, just, that's so great. And I mean, every take there'd be something like that. And it's so exciting to be in a room. It's the same things with Colin with. The, Jerry, like to be in a room with that level of character, you know, it's such a great 
pleasure to be able to watch someone create something so interesting and so fascinating. And David's great, great person offset too, you know, and just hanging out with him. And the whole cast, we, it was a good, it was good fun. <laughs> <laughs> I think it shows up on screen. Yeah. Yes? Hi, I got a question for Carla. I wanted to know, what would you be interested in playing in a superhero if you had the opportunity? Oh, wow. I thought I was playing a superhero when I did Alexander, and that kind of didn't pan out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, definitely no sword and sandal epics for me. Um, I don't know. Look, I don't know. I didn't... It's, some of it's a cultural thing, but I didn't grow up in the world of, of comic books or being aware of the kind of... the actual deep and, and kind of socially relevant lore that I've since found out is inherent in... Um, and a lot of the mythologies that comic books represent, but but um, I don't know. I don't, a lot of the stuff, I don't know the backlog, I don't know the library, I just know that a lot of the work that I'm seeing now from those worlds I'm really enjoying. You know, particularly starting obviously with Nolan's Batman and stuff, and then, and then Dan, and, uh, and what this guy did, and Kick-Ass, and I mean, just a lot of them I really, really enjoy. I find it's a great level of two things, like, it's just entertaining, and also a lot of, a lot of deep significance to, to those worlds, you know. Hello. Sure. <laughs> sure. I'll make a paper airplane out of it and see you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do we have any more questions? <laughs> we have more name tags. I got a pen. Anybody else want? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Take it. You just yeah. ended the press. <laughs> I tried. If you want to climb that, you're more than welcome to so, Thank you. I have Hershey Kisses. Anybody want a Hershey Kiss? <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> this, is this is awesome. Over there? <laughs> I think I hit someone I wasn't really expecting it. <laughs> morning in the bathroom before I left. <laughs> I was really in such a hurry I didn't. <laughs> Thanks to us. It was a good intent. Do we have any more questions? <laughs> Anybody want to get over the uh, circle of heck? Mm. No? Okay. We want to thank you all for coming today. Thanks, guys. Thanks. 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 Ha, ha, ha.